Welcome back to Abundance Homestead. This is going to be a quick doodle video in which I talk about how we figured out how much catchment we need for our rainwater harvesting to be able to supply our household. So our homestead is completely off grid. There is no water available, no public utilities, no running rivers, any, anything like that in our area. Drilling a well is cost prohibitive for us. So our option, our best option, and pretty much only financial one is to catch the rain water. So I'm gonna go through in this, how we figured that out. And hopefully it will help you in being able to look at your own property or your own situation and what you might be able to do. Hopefully you'll be able to learn a little bit from this. So. The numbers that I'm going to give you are our numbers. I'll tell you how you can figure yours out. And I am using inches and feet for this and gallons. All you metric folk have it a lot easier than we do because your numbers are way easier to deal with. Anyways, to get started. Oh, and before I go too far in this as well, I want to mention that when you are looking to set up a system, check out your own areas, your own region or counties regulations about rainwater catchment and harvesting those do vary by area in my area it is not only legal but it is highly encouraged to do so so getting started with all of that we are a family of four right now the two our two children are very young so their water usage is less than the older adults but the first step that we had to do was figure out how much water do we want to be using a day before thinking about how much rain water rain comes from the sky or any of that how much do we want to use so our goal right now is 50 gallons a day eventually over time i'd like to build that up to 100 so when the children are older we have way more wiggle room 50 already although it is a very low number for the national average that's for the whole family by the way that's not per person is already a number that i think gives us a little bit of room but i added up how many times are we going to do dishes a day how much water does that use how many times are we going to bathe how much does it take to to drink to cook to clean all of those things and i came up with a number of 50. In other videos, we'll talk about some of the water conservation, rehydrating the land, use of gray water, and all of those things that we'll be able to use to conserve water. But this is the, the fresh water that we will be using. So 50 gallons. Now, I every step of the way, I try to build wiggle room in and simplify numbers. So 50 gallons a day. If I multiply that by 365 for the days of the year, I come out with a weird clunky number to work with. So I'm going to round that up to 20,000 gallons a year. That's going to be my goal. Now, if I divide that back by 365, that actually means that I will have about uh, have 54 point something gallons to work with. That's easy for me to picture because that's the size, that's how much fits in a 55 gallon drum. So now I know how much I want to store. And by the way, I want to be able to store an entire year's supply of water at once. Some people live in areas where you get rain throughout the year, but my region, and this is very common in the drier areas, especially in the desert Southwest where we get a monsoon season, the majority of our rain comes during a very short period. Yes, we do get snow. Yes, we get some spring and some fall rains, but really that those few summer months is when our storms come and all the water. So I wanna have all of that, the capacity to have a whole year supply at once. So I need to figure out now that I know how much I want to store, how much catchment do I need to catch that in square feet? I already have my roof that I'm catching off of. So I'll take that number out of it, but I'm going to start by taking my goal of 20,000 gallons. And then I'm going to consider how much comes from the sky in our region. I looked it up. We get 14 point something inches a year on average. That's a 
clunky number to work with, I'm going to take that down and call it 12 inches to work with. I'm going to do that because that makes the math much easier. And I'm always going to go in the direction that I'm always going to err in the direction of caution. I wouldn't want to average that up to 15 or 16 or something like that. And I suggest that you do the same. So if you get something like 20 inches a year, work with the number 18 because that's going to be easier to work with in terms of, well, you'll see in a second that so that's a cubic foot and a half. So the reason that I'm using 12 is because that means for every square foot of catchment, I get a cubic foot, so 12 inches by 12 inches of water. Now, a cubic foot is 7.48 gallons. That means all I need to do to figure out how much catchment I need is to take my number, my goal of 20,000 and divide that by 7.48. So the number that I come up with, again, is a little, is not a perfect number. So I'm going to, or a, a whole number, or easy to work with, I'm going to round that up a little bit and I'm going to call that say that I need 2,675 square feet of catchment. On my property, I already have about 1,060 square feet of catchment. That's adding up my roof space on the house, all of the sheds, and the pre-existing tanks, anything that I'm going to be catching water off of. So I can go ahead and subtract my goal and get what is left over. That leftover number is what I need to be able to make to be able to catch the rest of my water. Obviously, I'm not going to build a house that big, right? I'm not going to build, actually, I'm not going to be building structures. So I've got to come up with other ways to catch that. Now, Looking at the, pro at the items that I already have, I have some roofing. So it's not actually tin, it's a metal roof, but I've got some metal roof panels that were pulled off of my roof on the, on the house that leaked and I replaced it. So I've got, um, let's see, I've got just about 300 square feet of that. That leaves quite a bit, so I'm not, I don't have the math right now, I'll doodle the math, um, <laughs> that I still need to be able to make up for. So I have a lot of different options on how to do that. I've seen people buy tin for that. Buying a straight up tarp to lay on the ground is not a good option here because a tarp will be eaten by the UV, so it'll be just absolutely destroyed within a matter of a few weeks to months. But greenhouse plastic has a much longer longevity. They, you could, any sort of roofing material that you might have if you have access to um, TPO. Or one of the techniques that I'm planning to do is to actually do a ferro cement catchment um, is an option. And you can also, another option would be Actually, if you could catch it in a lined pond, so you, you'd need either a liner or it would need to be sealed somehow with a clay or lime or something like that that you could pump out of. So that is how I figured out how much catchment I need. I'm not there with the storage. I can store about, let's see, how much storage do I have? I've got roughly um, the ability to store 8,500 gallons. So I am missing some, and I'm gonna take you along on the journey of building ferro cement tanks to be able to store the water that I'm gonna be catching. Our monsoon season starts in June. It is now the middle of April. So I've got to get moving. If you are watching this in the future and that has already taken place, I will include the links for you in the cards, wherever those are, and in the description below so that you can come along 
um, and catch up with us to current. If you are watching this at the same time that I am recording it, then I really look forward to sharing this journey with you. And until next time, thank you so much. Um, this is a new channel, so I do invite you to subscribe, hit that little notification bell and thumbs up, comments, all of that, that really helps to spread this channel so that other people can get access to it and hopefully create some dialogue and, and share some of the inspiration. So until next video, thanks so much.